they like my background my printer ran out of ink as I was halfway doing it so this is technically fully black uh, black and white and uh, this is technically with color it's 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 a lot funnier this way but I have a lot more uh, pictures that I have not printed out still <laughs> It's something cool, right? I don't know. I I don't think the camera can focus that far away, but it can definitely focus on me. And you can see the memes in the background as I move around, and uh, I'll have more all throughout the wall and also here. And that will probably make the videos a little bit more interesting and have a little bit more of the personality in the channel. So um, all right, so. The ant species that we're going to talk about today in this ant care species guide is a single one and a single species that I I, 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 I love it. I, I love them. Um, so, the last ant care species guide, I think I'll do that because I've recorded it just a while ago. Um, it was on three different species and if you haven't watched it, in case you watch some videos of mine, go watch it. And... Um, that video was about three species. This one is about a single one because there wasn't no prominent ant species that is very, very much the same as Solenopsis fugax, which is a species that I, as I've said, I, I love them. I, I adore them. They're so cool. Um, and if you cannot detect my irony, I, I, I do not like them. I do not like them at all. I kind of talked about why I don't like Solenopsis fugax in my tier list video, but uh, first of all I wanted to go into more depth about why I don't like them and I also understand and respect any person who actually likes them and therefore I feel like doing an ant care species guide on them is first of all okay and second of all good. It, it's good and then it's almost charity for me because I, I don't like them at all so um, here's the thing Solenopsis fugax if you know Solenopsis Solenopsis is a species of the fire ant so you will have Solenopsis geminata Solenopsis invicta Solenopsis and then on the other one hello future ants Portugal here editing the video um, so I, I mentioned the other uh, Solenopsis species and I, I, I meant the one that the other one that is commonly sold to ant keepers. But uh, since I'm an idiot, here's a, li a list according to Wikipedia of all the species in the genus Solenopsis. And let's get back to the video. But those are Asian fire ants. They create massive colonies. They are a huge force of nature. They, they, they'll sting you and they will hurt a lot. And these... These bastards, the European ones, they can't even sting you right. It doesn't go through your skin. I mean, if you're a baby, they can hurt you. But if you're, if you're at least five years old, meh. They might, you know, make you a little bit itchy. But it will be nothing to be worried about, even if you get swarmed by them. Um, all right, so... They can't even do that right, and uh, it's personally something that I appreciate because I don't really like those dangerous and very sort of powerhouses of an ant colony. Uh, I mean, I like them, but I usually cannot keep up with the infrastructure that is needed to keep them, which is technically not a lot, but um, I'm not a full-time ant keeper. So, here's the thing. They come from all the way around the Mediterranean Sea. They exist in Europe a little bit far north. Then just the 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 literal 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 the the coast the coast of the Mediterranean Sea in Africa they don't go far south at all because it's the Sahara Desert and so they they stop there and and in Europe they can go a little bit farther north but they're not a cold loving species in any sort of way so. That being said, let's give you some numbers for humidity and temperature, and as you probably know if you watch any of my videos, if you do not know how to, uh, given this num these numbers that I'll give you right now, if you do not know uh, what to do with them, and how to properly allow your ants to thermo and hydroagulate, because you do not want to do that for them, you want to let them do that for themselves. 
uh, watch my video about that on the channel, which is called How to Thermal and Hydro Equator Rain Source, something like that. Um, and I think I've referenced that, that video ever since I made it. Now, the numbers will be, and, and will be, no, they, they are. It's, it's more of a fact than a something that will probably maybe happen. No, it's, it's a fact. Uh, the numbers are that in, when it comes to humidity, they really do prefer it a little bit moist, but they can handle more dry ish conditions. So anywhere from 30 degree for 30 degrees, no, 30% to 70% humidity, your Solenopsis fugax colony will do very, very well. Um, however, they do prefer anywhere from 40 to 60, and it's a little bit of a small uh, sort of end goal there, but just like Solenopsis Nige from the last video, it's usually kind of the uh, humidity that people have in their homes. So just a little bit more in the nest and it's fine. Maybe a little bit more than Oasis Nige when it comes to that little added, um, that little added humidity, okay? So in, in temperature, they can handle a big variety. They can handle anywhere from 18 to 35 technically but they're not very cold loving, so anything below 21 and 20, I would not recommend, though they can handle it, they can live for a while on that temperature, please don't. And if you want to have them thriving, anywhere from 23 to 28 is great, anywhere hotter than that, and you're actually, um, not aiming in brood production, maybe the, the the generations will come faster, but they'll also, first of all, they'll also go faster, and second of all, the batches of eggs will not be as big and as consistent as if you have a perfect sort of temperature range for them, because um, you should also have a temperature range and the temperature difference between places, because letting them thermoregulate. Okay, so... Let's talk sizes of these species. Oh, well, first, hibernation, right? They do hibernate, but they have a very short period of hibernation. They hibernate from November to February. Now, they are known in the wild as thief events because they steal and eat the brood of other ant species, namely Laceus and Formica species, which is a, a bastard thing to do. And just like these ants are in and of themselves, their behavior in the wild is also of a nice person. Okay, so they steal from the other species and Laceus and Formica are, are both uh, genuses that usually will be in hibernation from October to March, which gives the thief ants a two month window well one month in the beginning of the hibernation season and one month at the end of the hibernation th season to actually steal big piles of brood from uh, colonies of those species without having much of a threat because the 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 ants inside the nest will be in a semi-dormant state of hibernation so it's easier for them and once again well behaved ants okay so Here's the thing, sizes, and that's where it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's awful, okay? So the workers of Solenopsis, well, first of all, the queen of Solenopsis, Fugax, is six millimeters, which means she'll probably not go anywhere from your setup. But anyway, six millimeters is like the size of what I would consider a medium to small ant, you know? It is basically the size of a big Laceus Niger worker, which is not a lot at all. And here's the... the Poopy! Part, okay? The workers are 1.5 millimeters to 3, okay? So, and I don't know why it says 3 on the internet. I've kept a colony of Solenopsis Fugax that got pretty massive, so if they were to get any bigger workers, they would have. But there was no worker with 3 millimeters. There was no polymorphism for me to see. I mean, yes, some workers were slightly bigger, but 3 millimeters they weren't. They were not 3 millimeters, okay? And the thing is that with this size, they can squeeze through almost anything. So if you have a glass or acrylic on top of 
um, on top of your nest, they'll just squeeze right through. And it's it's amazing what they can squeeze through, okay? Because their exoskeletons are really tough and their insides can be sort of smooshed to other parts of their bodies because they're such small um, invertebrates and almost all small invertebrates can sort of get away with fitting in small spaces and sort of bending themselves in ways that you think that they, that, that they just break. They, they don't. They just survive and they get out. And... Uh, well, if you have two tubes that don't exactly fit well and one just sits sort of like that inside the other, they'll get away somehow, right? They'll find a way. Even if it, even if it seems almost airtight, it, it isn't. And so you have to glue everything to make sure that there actually is no way for them to escape. They aren't great climbers, okay? So they won't be crossing any barriers, but they are very small. So some barriers, they just run past okay and they don't even care but that is not the problem the problem with this and species is that they can squeeze through anything okay and what you will see in most uh, man-made uh, setups is that they can sort of squeeze into the hydration holes if there are any sort of holes for the hydration chamber they'll just squeeze through them so if you have the layered acrylic type of nest, there aren't any holes because it's just it is just distributed by capillary action, which is very good for that ant species. But if you have anything else, they'll squeeze right through. Okay, so um, stuff like the ants Canada models and uh, and they're they're absolutely amazing. First of all, but still, the Sonopsis fugax will just squeeze through, which is terrible i mean they're a great species in terms of behavior and everything else but they're so hard to contain and they are so small which i do prefer bigger ants and uh, not too big I, i'm more of a like a medium-sized ant uh, type of guy and so first of all they're not so appealing just because of how small they are and because of how small they are they can escape out of my setups which is baffling sometimes sometimes it's okay i made a mistake sometimes it's just how and uh, they have this nature of sort of once they find a way out they don't just get out on you know first of all because of the queen cannot pass through the same holes as the the smaller workers but they have this sort of a a behavior of just sending one or two out through the hole to explore so you don't actually if your colony is big enough you don't actually know if you took them out with the trash and they just escaped like that or something and sometimes you don't know if they're escaping or not and sometimes you've changed your setup a couple of times and uh, you don't know if it's it's a new error a past error and they've just been around uh, or if you if you corrected an error and they're just they just found a new hole or if i mean can you tell how paranoid I am about this species? Can you tell how much of a hard time I've had with this species? And I was a lot more inexperienced when I tried this species, but looking back and what I did and what I had as, as, as the setup and what other species I was keeping at the time, I do not think I could have done a lot more than what I did, because uh, sometimes I, you know, I take the time and glue everything super tight, right? And everything is working, but, you know, one day I have to clean a tube. So I, I cut it, or I take it out, or something. And the new connection, I feel like, okay, all right, it's good. Right? Okay, I'll stop. <sighs> okay, so, they fit anywhere. And they're very hard to keep. I will say that I'm a bit, a little bit of a, I'm a little bit paranoid about that because of the experience I had. And they are kind of rewarding. First of all, they eat insects and sweets, and they are very carnivorous, right? They will take down and consume a lot of insect meat. That's the the primary driving force for them when it comes to food okay and i will say that it's actually pretty interesting to watch a bunch of these small ants just get together to eat okay 
I will also say that once they escape, they are not a hazard. So that's the good part, I guess. And uh, they also develop extremely fast. And they also hibernate. So even though they grow very fast, if you want to, you can have sort of a break of their growth and expansion to just sort of prepare for next year's explosion in population. If you want. And also... The queen doesn't live very long, right? Almost any Solenopsis queen doesn't live very long. If you've watched, if you watch Ants Canada, which I totally expect any of you to, because it's it's the ants keeping community on YouTube, and he's like he's our king. And um, so, if you've if you've watched that, you know that the the Fire Nation, the 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 colony of Solenopsis Geminata that he had died and. Most likely it is because of the queen. And the queen had, uh, he thinks, five years. And that's an average lifespan of a Sonos to Geminata queen. Sonos is Fugax, lives a little longer. Technically they live, they can live to up to 10 years, but it's not normal. The normal stuff to happen is like five, six, seven, okay? With hibernation, because if you don't hibernate them, they'll live five or even less. Uh, so, the hibernation period is also very short, which, uh, first of all, suggests that the colony and the queen doesn't really need it that much, but the queen lives for such a short amount of time that maybe being such a small amount of time that you're um, putting them down for. Uh, I will say that I would and did do hibernate them, and if I ever keep them again, which I won't, I will hibernate them. But I won't, because I won't keep them. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, so I forgot to say this. Um, they are polygynous, okay? Uh, Sonopsis fugax is very polygynous, and they, it's not uncommon to have a colony with, like, 10 queens. And they can grow to, like, 100,000 workers, which... They're very small, so they fit in a very small space. But still, 10,000 workers, and they brood to sustain... 10,000 workers, 10,000, no, 100,000 workers, okay, it's, it's, it's 100,000, it's a lot, okay, and, um, that's very cool that they grow so fast and go to so, 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 such big numbers, but the whole thing with them escaping is just, yeah, okay, so, back to the regularly scheduled programming. Ay, 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 ay.